Hello, today we are going to see how to write a simple HSpice code for a simple NAND gate. So the first thing in the HSpice, uh, what you're going to do is that actually four steps. That is first your description of your circuit and the transistor sizing for your circuit. And the third one is the input pulse transitions, uh, which are going to give to your gate. And fourth one is your measurement file to measure your outputs. So the first thing we are going to see today is the circuit description, how to write the circuit description for a simple CMOS circuit. So this is your basic NAND gate, two PMOSs in parallel and two NMOSs in series. So how are we going to write this gate in HSPICE? So the syntax is for writing the circuit description is first you have to name your uh, transistor whatever name you want but it should start with an M and the name of your transistor then the transistors respective drain gate source its substrate and name of the FET what is whether it is a PMOS or NMOS and your size so if you just take the first one that is MT9 I just named it as MT9, you can name it as MP4, whatever you want it. So MT9 is the name of my first circuit, sorry, first transistor and its drain is connected to out and its gate is connected to A and source to VDD. Since this is a PMOS, the substrate is also a VDD. And the name of the FET, it's, since it's a PMOS, it's a PMOS. So about the sizing, I'm gonna tell you about the sizing after I complete writing the circuit. So the next one MT10. Its drain is out. Gate B VDD is your source. Substrate is your VDD. And since it's a PMOS, it's a PMOS. Next MT11. Drain is out. Input is A. Since it's an NMOS, the substrate is gonna be. We're gonna represent NMOS substrate as zero. So zero zero and most next MT twelve. Uh, the drain of MT twelve is actually this, not out. So I'm j I just kept ASB for reference point of view. You can name it whatever you want. So ASB B zero zero. And then most. So this is the way, simplest way, how you're gonna describe, how you're gonna write your circuit description for whatever circuit you want. Just name the transistor and write according to the statement. So how we're gonna define the sizes? Basically, for a C CMOS, the ratio will be two is to one. That is a PMOS to NMOS ratio. So your length will be your technology, whatever technology file you're using, and it will be defined in your technology itself. So for that the n length width sorry w of the nmos will be same as your length and the pmos will be double of your length so it's going to be represented as width and length with a simple w is equal to l min into 2 since it's a PMOS I'm doubling the length so then my length will be Elmin since it's a PMOS it's gonna be the same for this as well So for your NMOS W is going to be just Almin and L will be Almin as well. Yeah, this is how how you how you define your circuit and with the with the with that the circuit sizing as well. So if you just take a sample program of this, this is going to be your whole. NAND gate including input and output buffers so in this part this 
is your transistor section NAND gate transistor section so if you just take a look at this this is the exactly same in here but just the difference is I define another variable L, w min where w min will be equal to the L min value so regarding the buffers it's buffers is the same thing you have just draw a buffer circuit and take each transistor and just name it as in this structure so it's going to be circuit description and output buffer still over here so the next thing we are going to see is how to write an impulse pulse transition copy this So for this, writing this input power input pulse transition. First thing you have to do is draw. You have to draw your graphs. Whatever the graph, you select the input signal such that the output also covers the, all the transitions of your gate, respective gate. So I define my first signal as A B F here so it's it is represented as VA since we are giving it as an input and it's going to be a voltage signal so ABF will be the name of your signal or your input like ABC whatever it is and it's going to be 0 PWL is common for every other circuit and next one is 0 0 what it represents is here is my ABF signal so at 0 it is 0 then at 10 1 into pulse width i define uh, i if i define my pulse width as 10 so my at so at 10 nanoseconds my signal will be zero so if you see here at 10 nanoseconds my signal is zero and i define another variable delay where uh, if i define my delay as 10 pico so and my pulse width is 10 nano so it's going to be 10.001 so at 10.001 the voltage suddenly increases to VDD so this is the same so till 20 it's VDD again and at 20.001 it's going to be 0 so in this way we are going to write the whole input pulse transitions for the two signals ABF and BBF and uh, yeah so this is the same thing and if it's there another input signal you're going to define it in the same way so it's third for 30 it's 0 for 30 it's 0 for 30.001 it's VDD so yeah so in the similar way two signals are defined this is the way how you write your input pulse transitions and fourth one is the measurement file and which is a very important file so for your measurement file this is your measurement file actually so in this measurement file what we're going to do is we are going to define two parameters first itself average power and peak power it's going to find out find those things on its own we're not going to define anything but for finding the time delay and pdp the thing with pdp is pdp is your average power into time delay so we are going to calculate the time delay with it so for cal calculating the time delay uh, we have to write a measurement file in, in in which we have to specify what is your input signal that is a triggering signal and what is your target signal and where actually it changes or happens so in this if I take my input signal as ABF and here if you just see my output is out but I define NAND underscore output over here so it's just the name difference and you can just make it same as also so how we are going to write the measurement file so for simple things or for simple gate what we're gonna do is we are gonna see the output waveform of this 
so check the NAND underscore out waveform and whenever there is a change in the output gate so the change this change with respect to the input waveforms we are going to write a measurement file so if you're going to see there is a change at 10 nanoseconds so here at 10 nanoseconds td is equal to 10 what is the change here it's falling down and it's rising so measure tran ta1 this can be whatever you want and your triggering signal is abf because of abf this is changing nand is changing so vdd by 2 value at 10 because since the output is changing at 10 nanoseconds or you can keep it over here as well because there is if we go deep in there is going to be some exponential rising because of the charging and the discharging so the rise input is rising and your target NAND is falling so fall is equal to 1 so in this way for each rise and fall we are going to define all the signals and we are going to define for A hole like this and B for like this and we are going to take the maximum compare all of this and take a single measurement as the delay and from that delay you are going to calculate the average power of the circuit so this is the basic circuit how you are, uh, ba basic thing how you write head spice code and this is kind of similar for every anything in head spice yeah so let us just see the whole circuit or the whole NAND gate what it is so yeah this is your full NAND gate so at first these are like the library or these are predefined so you have to define this option post option and temperature whatever you want it to be so I, since I defined a parameter as W min over here I kept my W min as 130 nano because it's it's gonna be my technology file or my length of the length uh, length of the gate so Lmin is going to be the same and my VDD whatever you define in your program you are going to define it over here with an extension of dot P A R A M so my pulse width is 10 delay and this is how your transition till what time your transition has to take place is defined over here generally it will be equal to the pulse which will define that is going to be 60 plus so I took it till 70 you can take it 130 as well and this is how your transition takes place dot tran 10 p length tran this is pretty much tell, tells it to run the simulations in your thing so here is our input pulse and this is our circuit description of the buffer NAND and the output buffers and the measurement my file which I explained to you after writing all this what we're gonna do is we, we have to attach our library file this file will be provided to you sometimes so just copy the file and paste it and include a dot end at the last after attaching a library file or you can save this file in an another location and just call it in so how to run this file so just open your putty with your credentials just type nano space your file name whatever your file name can be so I'm taking as example 6 save it with dot sp so a blank is gonna open so just copy all of this and right click on your mouse so it's gonna get co everything is gonna get copied in this then plus control X and save modify also I'm saving my changes enter and in order to run this file just type hspice file name dot sp so this is gonna run your file the whole thing so if it comes as job concluded it means your file run perfectly so how we're gonna
take measurements of td and pdp and the waveforms so for that just type c scope so window is gonna open this is your c scope and this we're gonna see the waveforms and everything so just open click on this open plot lines go to your file it's example 6 oh. example 6 open so this is a dialog box is gonna open so just you check your file my input was ABF so ABF BBF and my output was NAN underscore all so these are the waveforms you're gonna get if you wanna see what is the time delay and the power delay just go to open plot lines and here go to headspice measurement file then search for your file it's gonna be with dot mto it's gonna show your measurement so another dialog box is gonna open so your pdp it's gonna show your pdp peak power your delay and if you want to see a curve of delay versus PDP so just click on this and set it to your axis and click on PDP so this is your TD versus PDP curve so in this way we are gonna do this basic hedge by scores and this process is similar for everything so that's it